The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials uh, up two. You get the NASDAQ up two. <laughs> uh, S&P's down six and a half. Gold contract flat, trading at uh, $12.84 an ounce. We had silver down four cents, $14.88 an ounce. Light sweet crude also flat, $61.45. We'll get those EIA numbers this morning. We sure will. Uh, gold, oil didn't move last night when the API came out. Uh, okay. You know, it was a shot uh, minus... Uh, Nothing too dramatic no, in either way. A couple yeah. million. It might have been okay. a build for a couple million. Okay. Notes and bonds. You got the 10 year note flat, 124. 30 year bond up one tick, 148.25. Now, both notes and bonds yesterday, folks, pushed higher, had volume, and they're flat this morning, but they get big volume. They are pushing a swing point with volume. They want higher price, lower yield. King dollar. King dollar down at 29 ticks, trading at 97.370. The euro is at 111.95 to one U.S. dollar. The yen is at 110, and the pound is out here at 129.94 to one U.S. dollar. So um, overnight we had uh, some volatility, no doubt. Uh, bottom line is that uh, we'll see where this whole baby shakes out. We're at Wednesday. I thought you were going to say overnight we got the president's taxes. No. Oh, we did. Okay. We also okay. got that. <laughs> That's what I thought we you were going to say. Got that. We, we also got that. All, there's a lot going on. There's, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think of swim as we do each Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, right here, every trading day, you want to understand options, option strategies, futures. Great program, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Real easy to get. Just go to... Um, YouTube, hit TFNN, subscribe right on your phone. It comes up all digital. It's a great picture every day, great education every trading day. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know, guys, every day during earnings season, or at least most of them, uh, there's one stock that takes kind of the headline. And yesterday was clearly Lyft with their first earnings after their IPO. But today, it's all about Disney. It's all about the mouse. Oh. So we're going to be covering Disney today. They have earnings after the bell today. And, and you know, let's face it. If you look at a five-year chart of Disney, this stock was stuck in a range from between $90 and $120. It's been stuck there for a long time because of all the good things that were happening with this company, ESPN was weighing on this company. Yes. So the breakout because of direct-to-consumer and their streaming business is really going to tell the tale, and we'll see if ESPN is fixed as well. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, we're, just, we're bringing up the numbers as you're speaking, Kevin, right? And it's, it's pretty dramatic for a company that that's large. I mean, 2015, they took in $52 billion. This year, $71 billion. And 82 next year. Don't yeah. stop. It, it, I mean, wouldn't it be cool to have a monster company that you could grow like that? <laughs> <be> pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, the parks and resorts are growing. Even though, like, ESPN has been such a big drain on their business. But the rest of this, you know, I'll tell you what, guys. Star Wars, that franchise that was purchased for about $4 billion, right? And everyone thought, wow, that's crazy to buy Star Wars, that thing, for $4 billion. Well, they're so far in the black already on this Star Wars purchase. Think about this. They made $2.5 billion off the first release of Star Wars, uh, or Star Wars under Disney. Right. They made $2.5 billion. And so there's three new Star Wars movies coming out, not to mention the theme park, you know, um, attractions at every theme park for Star Wars. So, you know, they, and then they their, broke their the, ability. Yeah, yeah, they broke the record for the Avengers, Avengers Endgame, right? right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, don't stop. That's, that franchise is really just starting, even though it's been out there for a while. I mean, you know, that that's pretty amazing, They man. can do a lot with those brands, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have a lot of things going on. So, you know, I, but that being said, everything that they've got within the, in the Disney brand, it's still going to be about how he guides 
forward. Right. The conference call today and the guidance that he gives, how he explains the direct consumer business and ESPN and all these other things uh, is really going to tell the tale for, I think, the way the stock moves tomorrow. And we got, so we got the uh, TD uh, platform up right now. We're looking at a four, $4.77 move. Yeah. Right. Expected move, yeah. this is, folks. Uh, you know. Right. So, actually, relative, that, that looks, what, what's that, just under 3%, pretty small. Yes. Yeah. Move. Yes. Yes. Right? I mean, we had more than a 10% move in some of the names we, we, we've had this week. So, you know, 3% 3, 3 or below 3% in this case, that is on the low end. We're going to have to take that into effect when we trade these options today, for sure. Yeah, no doubt. And you know it was interesting? You know, yesterday with Lyft, I mean, that was amazing. Like, the, the type of loss that they threw in for the yeah. year was incredible. It was like... 1.14 you know, billion. I know. Man. <laughs> that was... In a quarter. And, and, but, exactly. now there, but there was expenses on that. There was IPO expenses. There was stock-based compensation in there. But Lyft... You know, they've got to make it through the next week, let's face it, with the, the Uber IPO. Yeah. But they had a lot of good news that they put out yesterday. Most importantly was the path to profitability that their uh, CEO put out. So a lot of positive things coming up. Think about this. Their revenues went up 95%. Yeah, right. That's a big number. That's a huge number. And what you do have, there's no doubt, is that the uh, this isn't going away. Well, just like, you know, I was listening to your show yesterday. You know, the woman that was on, she was just saying, like, hold it. I, that she almost doesn't know anything different, meaning that from going sure, to right, college, right. going out here, right. do you know what I mean? That, that, that between going to work every day and going uh, out, that's... that's Who owns a car, man? Get with the times. Well, I get no, a feeling it's pretty that, close yeah, to where right, we're going, Kevin, right? That, that was, I mean, she was, she was like, hey, hold it. What are you oh, talking that's about? That's where things are going, right. for sure. Right. 100 percent, Tom and Tom and Tommy, and that's why it's so important to get the young consumer's view for how we trade the millennial economy. They don't even think about cars. Yes. Some yeah. of them, you know, and some of them do, but the percentage is dropping. And, you know, we're in the city of Chicago, which the big urban areas is where these uh, ride-sharing firms flourish. And it's because, you know, these young kids, they don't buy cars. Yeah, I they tell you. Ride. If Lyft shuts down, half this place is going to be late for work. No, you, you know, it's amazing, Kevin. So even in St. Pete right now, of course, you know, we have cars, but but the reality is, is I use Lyft down here all the time because right. it's just for parking. You know what I mean? Whether you're putting money in the meter or sure. parking, it's cheaper than parking. And, and, of course, in Chicago, it's really cheaper than parking. That, that's like, you know, forget it. You know what I mean? We're, we're only at the $10 spot down here, but yeah. you guys are at 20 or $30. So it's like, you got to be kidding me, man. You know what I mean? Guys, there's a new designated driver coming out, and his name is Uber and Lyft. Yeah, definitely. you got to love it. you yeah, got to love it. Definitely. Listen, folks, right here, every trading day, you want to understand options, option strategies, and the strategies are the name of the game, folks, okay? Whether it's a bull market, a bear market, you're going you're gonna to understand strategies and understand on a time level, which is just absolutely fabulous. Uh, just go to YouTube, hit TFNN, and you are off to the races. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to the program in 45 minutes. Thanks for having me on, guys. Have Thanks, a great Kevin. Day. You too. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading up 11. NASDAQ is flat. S&P's off five. We're going to be coming back. We have those uh, EIA numbers for you uh, in the oil market at 1030. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's Dow's up 21. Nasdaq's down. Uh, well, no, Nasdaq is flat. S and P's are down four. Uh, yeah, and we had uh, we were just talking about Uber. We had, we had put that article. So there was a little strike out here this morning. Oh, right, right? here he is. Yeah, yeah. So um, I know this is going on in Boston as well. Okay. So in numerous cities, that Uber one day strike, I believe, ahead of their okay. IPO. Um, on Friday, so maybe that's Thursday, maybe it's tomorrow. There, let's 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 get down to it. So Uber and Lyft drivers are logging off, taking to the streets uh, Wednesday to protest against. Uh, so that was this morning, yeah. Today, in, yeah. in comp the the whole day, I believe, yeah, um, yeah. So in the UK, even I guess drivers planned a nine hour an hour nine hour boycott, um, and I believe the same thing's happening in multiple cities in the U.S. Yeah. So at least eight cities: New York, sh Chicago, San Fran. <clears throat> Kevin Hanks, I was going to say, they better watch out what's happening in Chicago. Yeah. Um, and they kicked off in Australia, et cetera. Yeah. I think it was rush hour here. <coughs> Excuse going me. On. Okay. It may, maybe it's a similar nine to four yeah. or something. Um, yeah. And if we do uh, LYFT, if you get over and take a look at this, <laughs> the number that they threw in uh, is pretty incredible. Uh, so you got it down two bucks. Can we go into the news too? Yeah. Why not? Uh, Probably the top one, as they impress. I'm sure it's going to have uh... So, yeah, they say they're broadly positive. It was quite a volatile overnight session in terms yeah. of... And it was just flat when I was doing the 10 o'clock update. Um, let's see what they got here. No, so these are just analysts raising their... Bump. Yeah, it really... Uh, it, it was the amount of the loss that they threw in to this quarter here that was extraordinary. It's like in the quarter they lost... There it is, 1.14 billion. Yeah, they the lost quarter. more in the quarter than they did in the whole year. And it's like, that's, Excuse me. you know, it's like, okay, they're throwing the kitchen sink in. Let's see if we can start it again. Yeah, know? so here we go. So um, a loss of 1.14 million for the first quarter compared to the loss of only 234 million the year earlier. The widening loss was driven by 894 million um, charge for its stock-based compensation. So, I mean, that's, you know, 80, 75 percent of it. Yeah. Um, excluding that expense, the loss was 211 million. 
and um, they had revenue of 700, and that's that's what the company likes, revenue rising almost 100% yeah. to 776 million. There's no doubt. Yes. Yeah. It's a big number. So we get our oil out here too, right? <clears throat> we sure do. We had Hold a up. bill last night of 2.8, I think they said, Yeah, right? I think you were right. The API was about 2.8. We looked at uh, the EIA, much more even muted. I think a build of only like 340,000 barrels. Um, let me pull up crude oil. So there's our crude chart. Trading right now at 6160. Looking at that June contract. Jumping in. So we'll start with the 11 AMs. Let's see how these line up. So again, 6160. We're going to have an option of 6175. And it's kind of nice. To, it's not this bad. is exactly what we do with the earnings, as in that one day market move, right? right. We figure out basically how much they're going to charge us to hold this. Um, not bad. You have a, <coughs> excuse me, swallowed. Um, 15 cent head start to the downside, right? You're going to have value. So your bullish one, it's about 15 cents out of the money. You start getting value at 61.75. So that's just going to be all premium, 10 bucks. And the bearish one is where you're going to have 15 cents of intrinsic value. Then you're going to pay some premium on top of that. So you're looking at 36 bucks. Okay. Represents 36 pennies under 61 or in either direction from right. 61.75. A little bit bearish though, head start. Let's see where, <laughs> close these real quick. So that was the 11s. And that was, what was that again? 30? 36. 36, okay. And, um, okay, so this is kind of cool we can figure out. Now the noons line up with 61.50. So this is a great example where you get used to it, right? You say, ah, you know what, that trade's okay, but I was a little bit bullish, really. Yes. Well, these give you the option to now have that intrinsic value on the bullish side. Your bullish trade becomes the one that you're paying 26 for. Your bearish one is going to become the one that you're paying. There we go. Um, a little bit more. 42. So okay. 42. You yep. have the extra hour, right? But again, kind of cool that now you have 8 to 10 pennies on the bullish side. Right. And let's see where some of these dailies line up. So you get the first one. Okay, that's 61.50. I'm just going to jump to these dailies at the same time. And that's going to line up only at just at 61. But this is good. This will give us, so same exact price point as the noon. There's your bullish. It's now going to be $34. You get 10 cents of that in return to value. And the For bearish. Two hours. Two and a half. Two yeah. and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Fifty-six dollars. Okay. Um, and of that, you have a fifteen cent head start to the bullish side. Okay. Right? So let's, let me take a look at the. Uh, so CLM, I think we're on. Yes. June contract. Yeah. So hit sixty-one oh seven this morning. Oh, this is interesting too because what we had is that on Monday you did come down with volume. Oh, yeah, a little pressure on yesterday with volume, too. Interesting. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, because oil's been moving a lot with the market. I mean, it it, has. as you see those two, it I has. mean, it's basically that could be an S&P um, chart with the it, gap down. I know. The huge move Monday, the gap down yeah. again. Yeah, well, I'm going to go for a lower price. Okay. You, know, you got that you get that low yesterday at 10, 10 o'clock in the morning. You can see that that's, that's sticking out like a sore thumb. You know, right there. What is that? That's 60, 66. Yeah, remember it was $60 and 666 oh, yeah, yeah. totally, um, totally. was the low. Right. So we'll see where this baby goes. Um, yeah. You know, and there's no doubt, we, we brought this up before, that the, the oil contract in general, you know, back almost the last year and a half, where oil goes or where the S&P goes, they've been following each other. Definitely. You know? Let's see if they got any analysis in here as they start there. Good, they got some what to watch for us. I like these as we get ready. So, um, outflows and inflows. Last week, parts of the U.S. South again met with a bunch of bad weather, ranging from heavy rains to tornadoes. Um, while there was little reported in terms of waterway closures, the weather might have slowed down marine traffic, sapping both imports and exports of crude and products. Isn't it wild how the economy works? Or it is. The weather of yeah, these, the, right. how it plays in, right? We've seen refinery problems in terms of their... Um, a lot of real fundamental nature yeah. aspects of you what's know. going on. And here we go. Refineries. Utilization is at the lowest level for this time of year since 2016. Well, it's only 2019. That's not. It should improve as plants come back from maintenance during the course of the month. Crude bulls are looking for a pickup in refiner demand to eat into the highest stockpile since 2017. Crude oil... Crude inventory figures have recently started to get a bit wonky. Refinery utilization is flattish. 
Though expected to ramp up as they come back online, the main oil products have seen draws. Crude imports remain near multi-month lows, even if they've risen the last couple weeks. You know, we're two weeks away from the beginning of the driving season. Yeah. Three weeks. Yeah. I mean, May 30th, that's Memorial Day is the number. So. Yep. Uh, yep. But the other interesting numbers, though, because oil's still high compared to this end, that's the most amount of oil that we have in storage since, yes, since 2016. Yes, I agree. I agree. You know. And we've seen it, right? We've seen these numbers have huge builds. Right. And the market trade higher. <laughs> I mean, that's just, so that's no, why, totally. they, you know, totally. how do we get totally. huge surpluses and higher prices? Yeah. Well, we've seen it do it. We'll see if we'll do it again. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials down 18. NASDAQ is flat. S&P's off 7.5. Coming right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, gas inventories, uh, uh, crude inventories fell 3.9 million barrels. Big number. New territory. I New, don't think we've had a, no. a fall like that in yeah. a while. And to see where we're trading at, a little spike, as you would expect, right? We'll get into the real numbers, but it yeah. was pretty close to either being flat or a, or a slight build. Uh, API showed a build, right? 2.8 million. Um, so higher prices, less oil, higher prices, 6186. Um, quite a little spike. We're just trading. Coming into that number, 61. 
like 56, 6157. Because I even during the break I pulled up um, the 6150, right? I said, ah, right. oh, we're right next to it. It would have cost us about $40 to put on both sides until noon. Um, and right now you're almost trading them $40 up in terms of the bullish contract on that on that move. This is going to be deviant out here today. Ah, oh, look at that. They even have, um, so the whisper number was slight build, but the median analyst estimate was looking for almost 2 million barrels to the upside. Gas down 596,000. Estimate was a decrease of a million. Let's see, refinery utilization down versus an estimate being up half a... So that's pretty amazing because you'd think that, like I was going to say that Okay, so maybe the refineries are, you know, taking the oil now, but that's sure. saying that, no, that's not the case, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, the the, right. the no, discrepancy's not there, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe, maybe it's so many moving parts, it's awesome. Crude production. Well, you're not even producing it in the beginning, right? Maybe right. that was down ahead of. Right. So, because um, you have refinery crude inputs down, crude production down. Crude um, inputs down, too. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Not helping the market, though. Uh, no, a little bit of a pop, but we'll see where we go. No, but I didn't mean the broad market. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. still got the S&Ps down 10. And yeah, this is going to see. This is, you know, it's so wild. So we've been talking about, like, the last couple times that you've had the... Uh, a huge build and yeah. then a pullback. And, right. <laughs> and now, you, now you're going to draw down, and it's having a hard time holding price. Yeah, yeah. I agree. You've got to love markets, folks. There's no doubt about it. Definitely. It's pretty wild. 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at some of the uh, higher volume equities we have out here. So you get, uh, let's see, GE is up uh, six pennies. Nothing much there. Bank of America, four. We don't really have big action. Oh, oh Lyft is a big one. That's down 233. 3D systems. Oh, this thing's getting killed. Want to see? This is the um, uh 3D products, okay, that, you know, how they develop the printers, the whole okay, ball of wax. 3D wax. printers, yeah. Well, look scanners. at this thing, you know. Not good. And when you pull this chart up, oh, my God, I, I you know, you talk about time going quick. I remember, you know, this was like $92 in 2014. Oh, boy. I know, look at this. Uh, yeah, $97, 2014. <laughs> That's what, you know, the hype came out. Never be afraid to no. take some money off the table if you got a, a victory like that, right. man. Yeah, at huge, least put some kind of stop in there. Huge victory on the way up. Now what you have, you're coming into lows uh, in, in a big way, too. And they, they, so they came out with numbers last night. There we go. Um, and Yeah, so revenue, a big miss. Yeah, one, and look at the loss. They went from one cent. They were supposed to, the expectation we, uh, was one cent. They lost nine. No, yeah. yeah. So that's like almost break even, losing 10 pennies a share, nine pennies a share. And yeah, they miss on earnings. And... Um, just looking at forecast, anything? I'm sure that I'm sure the forecasts aren't as rosy on on that type of a first quarter. No. Yeah. Heavy, heavy number. Um, we go take a look at. Let's see. So that's the 3D. That's one of the movers out there today. Snap off a bit, huh? Oh yeah. Snap, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not 20, uh, 25 cents. Yeah. Yeah, that's lucky that it got a little pop on the last... Oh, look at it. It doubled the last five months. Oh, it was quite a pop, it was. Yeah. Bring this back. I can't bring it back but that far. But that's, that's where the problem is. Yeah, slightly. As in, yeah. It uh, was quite a pop, but you went from 30 bucks to five. Yeah, totally. And so the they're saying that with Uber, too, that they already have enough demand okay. to put Uber out at the high end. I had seen that as you well, know, yeah. And that's... If that, so... This speculation, folks, is $44 to $50. That's, okay. what they're, that's what they're looking for. So we'll see where it shakes out. Uh, let's go over and take a look at those S&Ps. So, As you jump around, I just heard a cool stat. You might have heard it uh, on Bloomberg early, early this morning. They were talking about Lyft's only in North America and Canada, I believe. Okay. Uh, Uber has huge opportunities for growth abroad, but it's not as easy as just, like, going abroad in different countries and getting the technology. Right. They're saying Uber takes in cash in like six different companies. Cash. They're somehow operating Mike. on a cash society. Like cash. Oh, really? Yeah, exactly. Isn't that staggering? And that's what they're saying. Like, they want market penetration in countries that don't even have the digital technology yet okay. to, to be doing what's really going on somehow, wow. at least paying. No, no, I'm with um, you, right. That credit card or whatever it is, so cash. Um, so it's interesting, right? That a lot is. of opportunity for Lyft to go abroad, but man, I, I 
never imagined that that's what they would, that's how business was working in a few select areas. I forget which one. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And then, you know, which, it's DD in uh, China. Yeah. And everything there uh, is on your phone. Yeah. I mean, right. it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, and as I said, the, what was kind of shocking is that the largest bill is at 101, which is $12. That's the, okay. Yes, that's the, the largest, largest cash currency bill. Yeah. bill that they make. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, so it totally makes sense. You know, you're not stashing any 50s or 100s or 500s anywhere. Yeah. You know? That's not how government stays in power, letting no. uh, yeah. China. China doesn't want you stashing uh, no, cash. No, go no government does. Right. Yeah. China gets to decide it, though. Yeah. And <laughs> that's no, what it's, no they actually get to that. write the rules without people having to say, so. Let's go take a look at the uh, NDX100, the strength versus the weakness. So you get um, Advanced Micro is up 2%. You get Electronic Arts 1. They came out with the numbers last night. Okay. Um, and they're saying the digital platform is, is performing for them. You know? Okay. But that charts a mess. But they, hey. yeah, it's, it's wild. It's going to go digital. I mean, you know, that's what that it looks like. That would be like. the deal, right? Um, on the downside, you get NetEase uh, down 2.9%. Netflix is off for uh, 2 Interesting. Yeah. When's Netflix come out with it? Are they come out already? Let's take a look. So, because they they'll react to maybe Disney. Yeah, they already yeah, came they out came with this early. With, well, early. Look, they're hanging right at the highs. This is this is still a great. I just job. it'd be interesting that Disney could say something that reacts oh, yeah. to Netflix tonight yeah. in their conference oh, yeah. call, especially yeah, for sure. Because you saw the reaction um, when Disney said that they were coming out with seven dollars for a subscription fee, which is pretty intense. Oh, no, Netflix no didn't want to hear that. No, no. <laughs> And then you get clack down to two and a half dollars. Um, this equity got hit yesterday too. They come out with Oof. numbers yesterday. Gap down continues to have some. Uh, so we're down from. Look how these stocks go, man. In three days, you're down from 129 to 114. Yeah. You know, y you have a great looking expansion on the way up, but it is absolutely amazing how fast you can come down. I'd guess they have some trade problems going on too, the way they gapped on Monday, in terms of you know some exposure there. I mean, we can go into their right. um, they, region because they, see, they really reacted, it seems. Uh, they manufacture yield management, process monitoring systems, and semiconductor business, yeah. Can you go into um, where they, and, their revenue or yep. which area? Yeah, they don't break it down too much, but... But it is Asia-Pacific. Hey, look at that. 3.2 billion. That's upside, right? So when you're looking at this number, folks, that means that's where everything gets made. So that's, yeah. that's where the Taft issues come in. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be moving right. You're going to see it's a gonna lot It's going to hurt of, both sides, as in, right, gonna, you can't just, yeah. You're, and you're going to see a lot of factories uh, move. Yeah. Move quickly, because you can. You, cause you can. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow right now down to 50. No, Dow's down 40. S&P's down 13. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, 
educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Talk some Bitcoin. <laughs> we get another one. Let's say, uh, let's see. Hackers stole 40 million worth of Bitcoin in one transaction. In a single withdrawal, hackers siphoned 40 million of Bitcoin from one of the largest cryptocurrencies exchanges in the world. This is like crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, so Binance said it would suspend all deposits and withdrawals for at least a week while it conducts a security oh. review. Um, so not only that, hey, no, no one's getting their money for a week while we figure out what happened. Not, not what you want to hear. Um, the company said thieves employed phishing and viruses to command, um, commandeer the 7,000 Bitcoin, and it was possible hackers might still control some users' accounts. This is yeah. wild, man. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, there's a story out here that Fidelity is going to, you know, basically allow you to trade Bitcoin. Yes. And, you know, as I said... The trust issue is, is great there because it's, I would agree. you know, but get, if this is one of the biggest ones too, it's going to be intriguing to see like, okay, how do they do this and what are you going to have to sign? Well, that's the difference between regulated and unregulated, yeah. right? As in too, you know, that this company operates under no regulations whatsoever, really, in terms of not yeah. like you are if you're a Fidelity, no, no, that I'm, you I'm, actually take customer money. Right. Um, doesn't that's, mean I, bad things might still not happen, but at least you have the the size of fidelity behind where right. they would be responsible. I, I really want to see what you have to disclose. You, you have to sign. I agree. <laughs> okay. Sure. You, know you always mean? want to see like, what you want to yeah. sign. Yeah. Like, so um, the heist builds on the explosive growth in cryptocurrency crime and investor scams jumped more than 400% in last year, totaled roughly 1.7 billion in losses. Um, more than half of that total, 950, was taken from exchanges like Binance and wallets. So they said that the theft affected one of its internet-connected wallets, which contained about 2% of the total Bitcoin holdings. The company said no user funds will be affected and the insurance will cover the losses. Again, not sure what... Uh, yeah. wonder what they're paying for insurance. That's what I was, yeah. Who, who's paying for that and, insurance, and, too? And, yeah. And is it Warren Buffett that's re... <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, he's right. one of the biggest reinsurers in the world, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Wild, man. Yep. Absolutely wild. So let's check back in on oil real quick and see where we're trading. Oh, little little acceleration it's pop. as we speak, above $62. So the contracts we were looking at... Had exposure of 61.50, the noons, so about 50 pennies above there is going to cost us $40 for both sides. So one way of saying that, right, is it's above the expected move, right? Right. The expected move by noon was pricing in at $40 because that's what both sides were going to cost you. We're now at 50 cents, uh, excuse me, 40 cents, 50 cents. Um, so you, you can make that decision whether you want to, and there's your bullish trade, um, which would have about 46 pennies with a little bit offer right around it. Little, maybe maybe higher prices. It, yeah, it's uh, finally look, got a draw. Let, let's take a look. Uh, so I know this is delayed, but let's see what it's looking like. Yeah, and it is delayed, but looks like we yeah, already can, got the spike. Got little, there's, there's the pop. Sixty-one seventy-five. This is yeah. a long way to go. Well, no, that's right. We're up to sixty-two now. We're up right? to sixty-two. 62. Yep. So 
the high of Monday was 62.92. Yeah, so we'll see. Yeah. Let's see the XLE with that's doing any juice in that. Up 18 cents. Nothing much there. So that means that Exxon is still not moving out here. Yeah, there you go. Chevron. It's going to be interesting to see how this battle shapes up. Uh, now, Chevron looks like it wants to come off this low here. This is interesting. So you got this building cause here. You get a lot of moving pieces in that market, man. So jumping back to Disney, this will be an interesting one, man. I'm going to tune in to Fast Market coming up after our program. I want to hear yeah. what they have to say. Um, let's go back. What's the expected move again? $4.77, I believe. You pull up that Analyze tab. Uh, 468 we're okay. looking at from that move. And if you remember what's interesting is yesterday we were looking at Lyft. Lyft trading at about $58. Yep. Had the same exact expected move, right? $4.80, right. something much bigger percentage. And it would make sense. Lyft's going to be a lot more volatile than a company like Disney as Lyft reports their first earnings ever. Um, so 134, we're looking for like 467. But the numbers, man, so they're looking for a decline actually in earnings. To a buck fifty-seven a share, that'd be a decline of fourteen percent. Maybe that has to do with all the spending they're doing in terms of uh, yeah. the acquisitions yeah. and, and building out the content and so forth. Um, and they see revenue of fourteen point five four billion, and they say dipping from a year earlier. I'm not sure why that would be the case, though. Yeah, so they're looking for that shift to direct to consumer strategy to weigh earnings in the near term. So any upside to estimates will likely spur positive sentiment. Um, I guess, I mean, when, when it broke topside, people, investors like the idea that they got that whole Fox deal done, and then they, they spun off uh, part of it already, Salem Networks, I said Salem, not Salem, no, it's uh, Sinclair, Sinclair Networks is going to get uh, the sports part yeah, of it. Yeah, 21 of those regional, yeah. regional right. sports right. networks, yeah, and they got um, it for like $10 million, and they said they just marked it like $20 million not that long ago. Really? Yeah, but what happened, there's not many buyers. Exactly. When... It's a forced hand. Imagine going right. into a situation where the person has to sell. Right. They have to sell. That's right. not a fun negotiating standpoint. No. no. Um, and that there, there was a lot of they're a tough industry right now to make money in, I guess. So oh, yeah. Sinclair's just gonna, right. gonna take a shot. Hey, listen, so yeah, there's no doubt, man. So there are the numbers. They're looking for 157 a share. They're looking for 14.54 billion. Um, and as they break it down, we were just going over right parks, huge numbers, yeah. man. In general, 5.63 billion of that 14.54 in 90 days is going to just be parks and resorts. That's the biggest. Look at that. It is. And we'll we'll pull up the description because remember on the description it's their biggest uh, year on the annual basis. Um, studio entertainment 2.1, media 4.62, and uh, consumer products interactive media 1.4. Who's the sell? 91 buys, 9 holds, 1 sell. Yeah. Brave, brave soul who's out there uh, yeah. with the sell on Disney. Mm -hmm. um, but the other side of that is they're going to have to spend a lot of money. I don't think they said they'd be profitable on that um, Netflix competitive app for like three or four years, right? And they're going to be spending billions to try and compete with the likes of Netflix and Amazon. Right. They definitely have the best name, but they're up, a bit, they're up against... Uh, Reed Hastings and Jeff Bezos, so that's a man, tough one. You pull up Amazon, that thing just hanging at its eyes, man. Amazon was actually flat there for a moment to the penny. That was yeah. That doesn't happen. All. I know for nineteen hundred dollars stock, yeah. right? Right now you're at nineteen twenty one, folks. Yeah. And uh, you know, Google, Google, once it pulled back there, Google's having a hard time holding price. And the, the uh, I guess we had the development conference, uh, Google and okay. Microsoft out here the last couple of days. There's been, there's been a lot of uh, press about it. Yeah, see this this one here. They Google unveiled cheaper Pixel smartphones on Tuesday after the company's line of premium handsets failed to sell in large numbers. Uh, slower processes and cheaper materials help Google price the Pixel 3 with the 5.6-inch in screen at 399 Okay, and they got a slightly larger one for 479 yeah. and that's, I guess, half the price of the company's existing Pixel phones. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, if you're charging $1,000 for your phones, again, you want to talk about competition, then you're competing with the top-of-the-line iPhone, right. man, and that's a right. tough competition, let yeah. alone the top-of-the-line Samsung, right? I mean, that's, you, you're really competing with some brands that... You've got to bring it down so quick, though. Yeah. You know. And Apple has, Apple has... Phones are 400 500 $600 yeah. on the lower and it would, end. It would so. seem that even those lower-end phones should probably 
extraordinary now. I agree. Right? You don't yeah. need a thousand dollar phone. Right. I almost have one, right? But yeah. everything. Four hundred dollar phone. Sure. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow right now uh, up six, NASDAQ is down one, S&P is down seven and a half. And yeah, so uh, this 1201 uh, Friday, uh, this is going to be official now because they, they, I believe they have to put it in the Federal Register anyway, so they, they did. Uh, yep. U.S. Trade Representative Office took the formal step of implementing the TAFs on Wednesday by publishing a Federal Register notice confirming the duties will increase as of 1201 Friday. Uh, China says this has plans to retaliate a minute after the U.S. duties take effect. I wouldn't want what to. What happens a, at 12:03? I so wouldn't want to be a farmer. So U.S. goes 12:01. Right. That's a laugh, but it is. China go 12:02. Right. What happens at 12:03? Yeah. No. It doesn't stop there. Of course, that's the point. And then, uh, yeah. so Trump said another tweet on Wednesday that China's just informed us that Vice Premier is now coming to make the make a deal. We'll see. But I'm very happy with 100 billion a year in tariffs filling, filling U.S. coffers. 100 billion where do a those, year. Where do those 100 billion tariffs come from? From us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's so happy. We, we, we are paying up, that, folks. Uh, you know, he's I, so happy. I, we're, we're paying up. And what you're going to see, that's this S&P, just fundamentally, that's, that's where this thing is, um, you know, going to have some problems. And yes, to answer the question, uh, 1201 in the middle of the night, yeah, the middle first of, minute of Friday. Yeah, so 
Well, you're gonna have the first minute for yeah. So everyone's gonna have to be up if you're trading the S and P futures, man. <laughs> oh, you better yeah. have your numbers in. Yeah, man. it's all gonna be built in. I would say, you know, if they somehow get avoided, that's where you better wake up. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I mean, it's coming. You know, I imagine at the end of the day, S &P Thursday, it's gonna be factored in. 95, 90 percent probability, unless there's some kind of change, um, in which case there'd be a reaction. I imagine 1201 goes seamlessly unless something changes. It will get sw will swings of 20 or 30, 40 S&P points. Well, let's say that's, that's this week. What's going on today? Right. Market's taking a break, man. Yeah. It's had quite Stay a right there. Yeah, no, there's no doubt. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We get a fast market coming up next. Then we get our man, Mr. Bowser Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bowser. Thanks, man. Wow! Go get him, folks.